Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Higurashi When They Cry Chapter 1. In the last episode, we got introduced to our protagonist and his rather colorful cast of friends from school in the, in the, the nice little quaint rural town of, Hina, of Hinamizawa. And well, so far, they're, so far they're a riot in their, in their own special way, each and every one of them. And that's pretty much the extent of everything that's happened. I mean, we've learned a, we learned a few things about all the different characters, like uh, Reina being Reina's uh, talent for cooking, uh, Mion being uh, the class representative that uh, likes to refer to herself as an old geezer and doesn't seem to mind dirty talk with our protagonist. We've learned that. Uh, What's the blonde? What's the little blonde girl's name again? Uh, S Saduko? No, no, that's not it. Yeah, for those of you who are new to the channel, I'm kind of bad with names, so it often takes me a little while to uh, remember people's names. So, just bear with me. I'll, I'll get their, I'll get everybody's names memorized eventually. But yeah. We just uh, we we just basically uh, did some uh, school shenanigans with the cast here. Nothing major happened outside of that rather chilling opening cinematic, where it seemed like as though somebody was, I guess, being chopped up by another person in a very cruel, cold blood fashion. But I haven't seen anything yet that could really indicate to me what that what exactly is the context for that opening scene and what could have led to it so I think I'm just gonna I think I'm just gonna go ahead and get things started and see what um chapter two of chapter one of Higurashi when they cry has to offer yeah apparently uh apparently chapter one has uh, multiple chapters going by uh, what the uh, save data what the save data tells me when I look at its information. So, chapters within chapters. Also, I found out that the little hotkey on the keyboard that I need to press in order to uh, just get rid of the dialog box was the space bar. I wish I thought to press the space bar in the last episode, but I mean, hey, better late than never. Now I can have an easier time getting screenshots for um, for these things anytime I want to now, without having to go to this little menu here and then selecting hide text box. But enough about that. I took it a little too easy on the morning of my day off. I was totally late. Today was the day Rina and Mion were going to show me around Hinamizawa. Why are we back to the why are we back to the original character portraits again? I didn't change these settings. There we go, that's better. Anyway, Rena, I like your outfit. Rena and me on Rory waiting at the meeting place. K-chan, you're late. Sorry, sorry. The show I was watching last night was really interesting. Blame that. Oh, so that's your excuse for being late and keeping two girls waiting? Apparently. Mi-chan, you just got here yourself. Oh, I thought that was Keiji talking. <laughs> last night's episode of A Day in the Life Of was interesting, wasn't it? She was just as guilty as me. Rena was carrying a pretty heavy-looking handbag. What is that? Mion answered my unspoken question with a wink. That's right. Rena really did make a picnic. Oh yeah, they made plans to have a picnic. Forgot about that. Keichen, after you left, Rena pulled out all the stops. It's not like I forced her to do it. It was nothing, so don't worry about it. Okay. 
She's been like this since last night, you know? Can you can you take responsibility for this? Right, alright. I am a man after all. I'll take responsibility. Gender's got nothing to do with taking responsibility, my friend. Huh? R responsibility? For what? For what? As we both turned around slowly to look at Rina, our gazes drifted downwards to the massive handbag she was carrying. It didn't seem logically feasible that it would be entirely filled with lunchboxes. Except this was Rena we are talking about here. About two kilos, I guess. When Rena was p was picking it up, I could see she was struggling a bit. I'd sa I say five. You're exaggerating. Keiji-kun is a boy, after all. I thought he could probably eat a lot, so... I made a lot. Okay. <laughs> Let's get going. Heave-ho! Just from the way she was lifting it up, I couldn't believe the only things in there were lunch boxes. Correction. I say five kilos, too. I'll help out, but all of it needs to be eaten. I won't forgive you if you make Rena if you make Rena sad. Got it? The only thing I could do at that moment was exercise a bit to make myself hungrier. Good strategy as any. Having finished the with the pleasantries, we began our leisurely stroll. A carefree walk, bathed in the gentle morning sunlight. I couldn't have even imagined something so wholesome existed during my time in the city. These were the boonies, after all. No slovenly desk jockeys trudging to work on the weekends out here. It really was a nice place. Peaceful and quiet. As sparsely populated as the village was, you could still run into people just by walking around. Ah, good day. Good day. Oh, you would be... My Barakun, I believe. My two companions exchanged greetings with everybody we ran across. All of these passerby even knew my name. When did I become this famous? Well, it's a small town, and you only moved in like about a month ago, so... We passed three people, and... When all three of them knew me, I started to feel a bit paranoid. <laughs> it's a bit sad to say. Everyone knows everyone since there are so few, few people here in Hinamizawa. So that means... So that means when an unfamiliar face walks by, they automatically assume that it's my bara... It's that my bara, bara fellow who just moved to here? Yeah, that's how it works out. It was a process of elimination you could only pull off in a place like this. But it was quite effective. From now on, I better make sure to maintain a good reputation. The day I'm discovered accidentally gawking at a dirty magazine in the bookstore, I can expect all the villagers labeling me as a lech by the next day. A reasonable fear in a small town like this. Hina Mizawa is not to be trifled with. That's not the end of this nightmare. Of course I know them. The first person we met was old man T Takizu. Takizu? Zuo? Zou? Takizou? I'm going to go with Takizou. Old man Takizou from, Mik from the Makino bike shop. His hobbies are bonsai and playing the flute. Next, we met the, grocer, the grocer's second son, Daisuke Kun. His hobby is sharpshooting, and he hopes to be an ace sniper in the future. And the person we just met was Mio san, the nurse from the clinic. Her hobbies are bird watching and photography. He 
you know the names of everyone we passed by? And even their profiles? Seeing my surprise, Mion and Rena exchanged looks and burst into laughter. Well, yeah. We're not like the city, where people hardly know their neighbors. Then let's try it out. You there, who am I? <laughs> you're, Ka you're Kaichi Maibara. You, you say some mean things, but you're actually a kind, shy person. It's been three weeks since you transferred here. Your hobby is taking afternoon naps. Lately, you switched over to wearing boxers. How do you know that little detail? Didn't you? That's enough, that's enough! Are you spying on me? Boxers. Enough of that. Apparently there is absolutely nothing you can keep hidden here. Which could be a bad thing if you're in a village surrounded by murderous psychopaths! And no, I have no idea if this village is full of murderous psychopaths. For all I know, it could just be like one or two. Hinamizawa uh, Hina Waza. Did you? I think you, I think you got the name wrong. Hinamizawa Waza was not a place to be trifled with. This feels more like you guys are showing are showing me off rather than showing me around. They could do both, I'm sure. That's right. We're parading around like this, after all. Don't you think so, too? That K that K chain is fitting right he right here in Hinam in Hinamizawa. The population in Hinamizawa is shrinking, so the villagers welcome anybody who's new here. I thought about brushing it off with something to the effect of "You're kidding me," but I held back. Have I ever greeted someone who just moved into the city like this before? Thinking about that made me believe what they were saying wasn't a joke at all. We passed another person. Of course, we were called out again to the same the same way. Oh my, good day. It's wonderful seeing you getting along. This lady here is Fujis Fujishima-san. Good day. Oh my. My Barakun! How wonderful for you, having a lovely girl on each arm. How are you? Getting used to life here? Instead of regurgitating a prepared response like I would have in the city, I responded with an empathetic nod. The old woman chuckled, voicing her, voicing her appreciation of how energetic I was. Good! As I looked over to as I looked back over to Reyna and Mion, they gave me a wink. So, now then. About time we have lunch, maybe? Maybe. Reyna's brilliant smile signaled the approach of an of an event that both Mion and I were trying to forget. We both looked at each other. I'm a man, I'll do what I can. But it's just too much. It's fine, K Chan. Leave it to this old man. Mion has never seemed as reliable as she does right now. I expect no less from the class representative. Reyna, if we're going to eat, we might as well go somewhere with a good view. Ah, uh, yes. Good idea. I agree. Reyna nodded her head, her head happily in response to Mion's proposal. Resting atop of a stone stairway, a shrine drawn straight out of my imagination appeared before us. It had worn down a bit through the years, but the fallen leaves had been swept up, giving it a tidy feeling. This here is the Farood Shrine. It's probably the best place with the it's probably the place with the best view around. This place. Be sure to remember it. On our next break, the festival will be held here. Ah. Isn't it a bit too early in the season for a festival? 
Yeah, because I meant if last I checked, I think Japan typically holds. Well, I know they have fall festivals. The oh, um the. Give me a sec. I'm trying to. I'm sounding out this word in my head. The Watanagashi isn't a summer festival. Long ago, it used to be a celebration of the end of winter. I was embarrassed for assuming that festivals had to be held in the summer. Well, summer festivals. Excuse me. Now then, spread out the lunch boxes. And there. Various colored lunch boxes were placed one after the other on top of the plastic sheet. It sure did smell delicious. It was Rena's home cooking. It went without saying that it would be delicious. But is it even possible to finish all of this? Hey, Mion! It'll take more than just a good view to get all this down, you know? Good afternoon. What are you two doing here? It was Rika-chan and, Sa and Satoko. That's your name, Satoko. I thought I was I was thinking I was I was thinking Sakoto or something, but yeah. Like I said, I'll get your name right on the fly without trouble eventually. Why are they here? Mion grinned over at me. I see. This was her secret plan to power in numbers. You have my thanks, Mion. Following up when all the pieces are in place is my specialty. We just had to come since there was such a commotion. What is the meaning of this? Take a look. It's time for lunch. Buffet style. A handmade gourmet meal by Reyna. I can see that much. Why have you laid out a tarp on our property? The temple is public grounds. It's not yours. Keiichi is right. This is everyone's property. Wow. Rika-chan is such a good girl. Have a seat. Eat with us. After opening up a spot for Rika-chan, I promptly turned my back on Satoko. Hold on one second. Where's my spot? You get no spot. No spot for you and nothing for you to eat. Don't worry. There's some for you too. None! I'll eat all of hers! I will not allow that! Rika! Here. Chopsticks. Both Satoko and I leapt at the boxes, having it out with each other. Man, really. K-Chan, you're really good at leading people on. You might have a talent for this. Have a plate. One for Mi-Chan and Rika-Chan, too. Rina whipped out pairs of chopsticks and paper plates. Uh-oh. I see a frowny face on Rika's face. If we don't hurry, it'll all be eaten up. That's right. Okay, shall we commence this battle? Please eat a lot. There's enough for everyone, Rena said as she opened up a thermos. Just then I realized that this lunch was made under the assumption that five people would be eating. It didn't change how much there was, but the implication behind it was different. Don't strike me! I will not allow you to have this hamburger. Hey, your elbow is against the rules, Satoko. Grabbing the back of my collar is also against the rules. <laughs> oh, you're holding a grudge over that, are you? At least I didn't flick your forehead. It was a tough battle. Blocking with her full momentum and an elbow in the opening moves, Satoko appeared to have the upper hand. 
but the difference in our proficiency with chopsticks proved to be fatal, and gave me the upper hand. Ah! The last meatball! Satoko Satoko Hyuju has been bested. Nom. Satoko and I amiably began choking at the same time, falling backwards and spasming. Well, this is what you get for being reckless of your food. Time to let Darwin do his work. Rikachen patted me on the head to clear it, even though it was actually stuck in my throat. Well, that's the thought that counts. Seeing that made Reina blush and breathe heavily in excitement. It was almost like flowers were floating all around her. Somebody get a can somebody get a leash on Reina before she does something. Mion advised Reina to refrain from saying anything that could get her locked up. This is how our meals usually go. I'd do anything in my power. Just so things could stay like this. The intense battle cal calmed, and finally, everyone reached a point where they could begin talking. Receiving tea from the thermos, I let out a small sigh. What kind of tea is it, just out of curiosity? I do wonder why there are so few words in Japanese to praise how something tastes. Isn't it because the idea of togetherness during a meal didn't begin until the modern era? Hmm. I didn't know that. It seems that it seems that long ago people ate in silence. It must have made the people preparing the food a bit sad, don't you think? It's probably because back then the people were bit were busy even while eating and didn't have the time to complement the flavor. No, if I had to guess, that had something to do with some with some sense of formality. That's just you. But you know, just hearing that hearing that's good makes me happy. Then my effort was worth it. I mean, she blushed a little as she said that. It was delicious. With absolutely perfect timing, Rika Chan stuck Re struck Rena directly with praise. She looked straight at her with an expression of bewitching innocence. Oh. Huh? After Rena uttered an unintelligible noise, a ring of smoke rose from her head with an audible poof. Is she- are you actually a robot, Rena? Is that why you have smoke constantly popping and poofing out of your head? How? We- we- Rika-chan, I'm gonna take you home. No, I mean, thank you. It was really delicious. I like how Rika just seems conditioned to <laughs> Rina's um, outbursts. Rina flushed red of excitement, embracing Rika-chan and rubbing her cheek against her so hard you could almost hear it. reward Rika-chan for her praise. Ta-da! These are special. Two apple rabbits. After st after sticking toothpicks into them, she thrust them towards Rika-chan. After Rika-chan accepted them, the mood suddenly shifted in a bizarre way. Bizarre how? What is it, Satoko? What's with that defiant look? Has everyone prepared proper praise to receive apples from Reina San? Don't push yourself. What kind of praise can you think think up with your weak vocab? Ho <laughs> ho Well then, allow me to show you. After Satoko fish uh, flashed me on and me a defiant look, she changed the tone of her voice suddenly. Um, hey! So, Rina Uni-chan's lunch? Satoko thought it was yummy, too. Satoko looked up at her powderly while, taking, while talking cutesy. 
What? How was that praise? That's not even persuasion by tears. That's persuasion by cuteness, isn't it? Well, she seems to know Rena, so this is Re this is a Rena limited special skill. She blushed and her head spun, waving around in circles. Don't fall for it, Rena! Ah, how? What are you, a fucking wolf? Of course, that's that was asking for the impossible. Rena glumped Satoko and began rubbing her cheek against her. She must be a robot wolf, shaped like a human. Cute! Satoko is so cute. Take you home. How? Swish. Stab. Push. Satoko is also pestered with apple, apple rabbits. After stuffing them into her mouth, she looked over at Mion and me and get, again with that defiant gaze. It only took five seconds to take down Rina. That, that's unfair! To think she has such a trick! If it upsets you so much, why not reward Rina-san with some praise? Damn it! That was a dirty trick! First of all, that wasn't even praise! Satoko, you think you've won of that, don't you? How about I show you guys something much better than your superficial gimmicks? That sounds great, Mion. What kind of trick is it? K-Chan is going to be the one who does it. What? Ho ho ho! Why don't I have you show me then? The, writh the writhing of an old maid. The plan of attack she, she suggested was wicked, but it was the only thing we had to beat Satoko. After sipping my tea, I started talking, very naturally and calmly. Perfectly. It really is good, isn't it? This is all freshly made, right? I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist. Talking perfectly for him. Ah, no. Actually, most of it, almost all of it, was frozen stuff. Then which ones did you make fresh? Uh, um, well, it's embarrassing. Do I really have to say? Masai, what's embarrassing about it? It's just telling me which ones are fresh and which ones aren't. From the synergy of a boy plus him a boy plus handmade lunchbox, her expression had melted into euphoria. I already know. This one. Right? Huh? Uh-huh! Ooh! Please stop making me please stop making me utter vulgar, vulgar noises. Rena turned in an even deeper shade of red, the words I can't believe it practically written on her face. How can you tell? How? <laughs> that I made it. Of course, Mion had told me beforehand. It's been perfect so far. After acting like I was shy, I waited a beat. Next would be... The Finisher. It had... Your smell. Silence of enveloped the area. Rena, face, st face still completely red, froze solid. With a small yelp, Satoko also blushed. Of course I did, too. I would... Ch I sure would like... to try one of Rena's handmade apple rabbits. Or something. Even if this was all because I was competing against Satoko, it felt like I crossed the line by a good nine yards, I think. More like 50. Then, at that moment, you got struck. 
It was a Tupperware container filled with rabbits. P -p 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 Please eat some, Keiji Kun. Th th there's plenty for you. What? Instantly, dozens of the apples were shoved into my mouth, knocking me over. Uh, okay. Say, uh. Keiji Kun. <laughs> You're a quiet character, Reyna. My head was forcibly laid upon her lap, and even more apples were shoved into my mouth. While she was squealing, one apple after another was forced into my mouth. More and more. Apple. I'm about two apples, ha ho! Looks like. How about them apples, Satoko? Looks like we win. Okay, Chan. That was a beautiful sacrifice! How's that, Satoko? This is our complete victory, isn't it? I can't believe it. Such trickery! Doesn't bother me at all! Satoko, Satoko ground her teeth, mortified. We did it! I claimed victory as my consciousness drifted slowly away from me. At that time, Rena stopped her squealing as she suddenly realized something. That the apples smell too much like you? Rika-chan... You're not eating it? Did the salt water make it too strong, maybe? Maybe? Looking over, Rika-chan had pulled the toothpick out of the apple rabbit, placed it into her cupped hands, and seemed to be at a loss for what to do. Poor Mr. Rabbit. I feel sorry for him. I want... Save him. Flee! That was the sound of blood splurting from Rena's nose. We even have the goddamn nosebleeds. At this, at this point, I think. At this point, I think we. At this point, I think we need absurd hairstyles and anime boob physics, and then we'll reach peak anime levels of absurdity here. You tonight, I will take you home. She sh she shook sporadically, her head wobbling back and forth. Then, coming back to her senses, she took all the apples around me, gathered them up with a flip flip flip, and fixed them back on a plate. Now they're all just fine, okay? Here, I'll give them to you, Rika-chan. Okay? Okay! Rika-chan raised up Satoko's hand, like a referee ever ha after having that plate of rabbits shoved to her. She whispered, This is our victory. What? What? A comeback? Hi. hair. Hey, oh. I just don't care anymore. Thus, my sacrifice ended up being in vain. Poor you. That was the most fun-filled that was the most fun-filled fictional picnic I'd been to in years. We got we got to have this we got to do this again sometime, guys. It was a fun-filled crazy day. But as soon as the sun began to set, the end of the day really did come quickly. Later, Reina and K-chan. 
See you tomorrow. Thanks for today, Mion. I had a great time. See you tomorrow. Satoko and Rikachin went home as well. We parted ways with Mion, and it ended with just Reina and myself enjoying the evening air on our way home. Thanks for coming today, Keiichi kun Was it fun? It was something, all right. Yeah, lots of fun. Also, it's like a waste to go home now. Ah, then, well, would you mind taking a little detour? Maybe? Maybe? A detour? Is it far? It's a bit of a walk, but it won't take long. Where are we going? Since we have been walking around all day, I must have seemed a bit tired. Not feeling like teasing Re Reyna, I quickly not I quietly nodded, excuse me. Hmm, a bridge. A dam? Traversing a small path and up the same, a, um, a small hill, the land suddenly stretched out before us. There. What looked like the remains of a dilapidated construction site came into view. A large heap of garbage spread out off towards the swamp. Probably illegal dumping. I recall it being in the newspaper. Ooh, it's been quite a while. I wonder what's here. I wonder what's here. When you say it's been a while, you mean the business you had here. Was it this garbage pile? It's not garbage. To me, it's a pile of treasure. Another person's trash is all of Rena's treasure. Rena had already entered that well-known cute mode of hers. So I meant there was something cute here. Whoa. A new pile. I can't wait. I can't wait! She bounded up the, un on the unstable slope. I'd expect no less from a born and bred country girl. Hey, wait. I'm coming. Whoa! -ho -ho! My city race self was completely pitiful. It's alright. Just stay there, Keiichi Kun. It won't take long. Rina kindly declined my accompaniment. Don't fall! Watch your step! I'm fine, I'm fine. This is nothing at all. Literally bounding up the heap of trash, Rina disappeared over the to the over the other side. I didn't like being left behind, but I was still pretty tired from the whole day, so I just ended up waiting. Without the lively arena around, the surrounding area quickly fell into silence. Honestly though, an illegal dumping ground. Whoever's responsible for all this is the, are the worst kind of litterers. The cry of the Higurashi gently cooled the air. Fairly exhausted, I began to feel a little sleepy. Just then, the sudden noise of scattering pebbles alerted me to somebody's presence. Startled, I turned around. Well, whoever you are, you seem awfully fit. Standing there was a typical looking photographer. He spied over me through his camera. His body was tanned and fit, but something about him seemed unreliable, and he had a bit of an aloof air about him. Well, it didn't seem like he was a bad guy in any case. Yeah, he doesn't seem like it, but for all we know, he probably chops off the he probably chops off the the heads of of his neighbors and then takes pictures of them and puts them in a photograph. Whoa. 
You surprised me. Although startled when I turned around, he overplayed his reaction. That was my line. I'm the one who's surprised here. My bad, my bad. I didn't mean to startle you. Are you from Hinamizawa? I gather that he wasn't from that question. Unfazed by my suspicious outlook, he introduced himself without prompting. I'm Tomitake, freelance photographer. I come to Hina I come to Hinamizawa from time to time. I didn't ask who you were. Quite rude to photograph someone without consent, one would think. My bad, my bad. I mainly photograph wild birds. They can't refuse, you see. Uh -huh. <laughs> so what? You're saying I'm the same as the birds. Would that be such a bad thing, Keiichi? That you're like a bird? No, well, you see. That image of a young man in the twilight was just picturesque. Or, or, I apologize for trying to take your picture without asking. Dolls are pretty slick. All that annoyance I felt for being startled just flew away as he buttered me up. I had no intention of hanging around with this guy trying to get cozy with me. Except it didn't seem like Rena would be back soon. But this older guy... Tomitaki-san. He didn't mind my cautious responses and continued rambling on by himself. Keiichi-kun! Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm finished now. Rina popped her head out from one of the lower piles of garbage and waved her hand. You have someone with you? Oh, I thought that was her. Sometimes it's kind of hard for me to tell who's speaking with uh, this kind of text box. You have someone with you. What would she be doing over there? That's what I wanted to know. Don't know. Maybe she's checking on a dismembered corpse that was, left, that was out here long ago. Tomitaki-san looked shaken up by that for a moment. Uh-oh. I respond like I would if I were talking to Rina and the others. It was quite a disturbing incident. They still haven't found one of the arms. Wait a minute, so he was you weren't just joking then, Keiichi. There actually was a corpse that was found here. <laughs> Keiichi kun, sorry to keep you. You were waiting a while, I guess. I guess. I best leave you two lovebirds alone. Again, my apologies for startling you, Keiichi Kun. Tomitaki sent Charles suggestively, then disappeared into the twilight. You make him sound mystical. Missing my chance to retort put me off a bit. Keiichi Kun, are you angry? Why, I wonder. I wonder. It wasn't Raina's fault, so I decided to just brush it off for now. So, what? Okay, he's asking. How was it? Find a treasure trove? Oh, yes. So, listen. Um, you see, there was a Colonel Sanders doll. I never would have expected a KFC reference here. That reminds me. I got I gotta check out that KFC dating sims at some point. Colonel Sanders doll? Oh, that thing. Those statues they always have out in front of that fried chicken place. That life size dummy? Yes! Colonel Sanders. How cute. I wanna take it home. I never would I never would have I never in all my life would have would have uh, thought that I'd hear the Colonel, Colonel Sanders just Colonel Sanders described as cute. I'm tripping over my damn words again. 
I couldn't tell I couldn't tell how she decides what's cute or not. Well, she seems to want it. It's garbage, right? No one would care if you just take it home, right? It's become the, the base of another pile. I can't dig it out easily. There's no lampposts over there, so it'll get dark pretty soon. Rena seemed quite down about finding a treasure and not being able to bring it back. I'll help you out. To repay you for that delicious picnic you prepared today. Oh. Thank you. Birds heading home from heading home to roost proclaimed that nightfall would soon be upon us. Keiji Kun is going to help. I can take Colonel Sanders home. Oh. Rena staggered along as if intoxicated in her dreamy state of mind. I tried asking her in a way that wouldn't take her out of her cheery state. Hey, Rena. Long ago, did something happen here? Seems like they were building a dam here. I don't know the details, though. Oh. <laughs> Just wondering if you knew about it. You know. An accident or something. I don't know. Her tone was disturbingly frank. Music stopping. Replies to... Replies to my question with a... Uh, "Quote unquote disturbingly frank tone." I think this is something I should pay close attention to. It sounded more like a denial than an answer. Now I definitely gotta pay attention. I must have appeared rather dumbstruck. Rena quickly widened her expression. Actually, I didn't live here until a year ago. Huh? You transferred here, too. I was sure that... So you see, I don't really know much from before that. Sorry. Don't really know. Don't want to talk about it. That was the kind of feeling she gave me. Thinking about it, of course it would be like that. This wasn't the type of thing girls would enjoy talking about. It was quite a disturbing incident. It seems they haven't been able to find one of the arms. If it's just like Tomitaki-san said, then I had a feeling only the Higurashi wouldn't know. Well, if the Higurashi know what, what actually happened, then I think the answer is obvious. We must learn the language of the Higurashi, gain their trust, and breed with their women. And in time, they will tell me all the secrets that they that they possess. Hmm. We already reached a checkpoint, huh? And and yes, I'm not I'm not being serious. Mating with Kikadas would be beyond weird. The Maibara Manor. Hmm. So, you have a manor, huh? So, K-Chan, you're not stinking rich? What, what is this all of a sudden? Did I come to school in a limo before? How much do you get for a monthly allowance? About ten dollars. My, that's ra a rather plebeian amount. Yeah, well, how much do you get? Eleven. His lunch is made up of normal stuff. He isn't rich. Uh, some people just like having plain old regular meals. It doesn't matter what their wealth status is, Rika. What are they talking about? To be asked out of nowhere how much I get, and then told that's a plebeian amount. <laughs> sorry, sorry. 
Rena seemed to pick on my dubious expression and started giggling. K-Chan, your house, you know, it's pretty big, yeah? So the architecture has people all around Hinamizawa, uh, Hinamizawa calling it the Maybara Manor, and it sort of stands out. Maybara Manor? Since the house is so big, everybody is gossiping, gossiping, wondering exactly how rich you are. I see. Now I get it. Well, the frame of it is huge. I see how it could cause some misunderstandings. From my deduction, I wager they spent too much money on building the on building the house, and that's why they are now broke. Being broke, how very, very fortunate, unfortunate. For a second, I thought she said fortunate. I'm like, that's not a fortunate thing. Rika Chan took pity on me as she patted my head. From being treated like a millionaire to a beggar. Yeah, sorry for ruining your imagination, but we aren't millionaires or poor. We're the image of a normal average household. You can't call it normal if that huge house. The entranceway is all grand, and the gate is large enough for a large truck to get through. That's not normal at all. They do say the bigger your house, the more prosperous you are. The reason the house is so big is because Dad's studio is in it, too. There are a bunch of different workshops, and lots of his works are hung up in different places. All of them are huge, too. For those reasons, the family actually uses only a third of the house for day-to-day -day living. Damn. Big that's big-ass work, work space. He planned it. He planned it out so people in cars could come in to see the gallery he opens up in the house someday. Makes sense if you're going to open it up to the public. By the way, the entranceway Mion is talking about is the one for the studio, and is normally sealed off. The entranceway the Maybara family actually uses is a very plain and simple one. The interior is much different from how it looks on the outside. I'd really like a chance to explore K Chan's house. Claiming not to be rich, but having a home like that! What could be hidden there? Maybe there's something cute hidden. How? Oh. I don't think I'll ever get used to uh, uttering her noises. They probably had no money to purchase furniture, so it's filled with Spartan rooms. Well, hey! I wouldn't mind being called a Spartan. If there are car if there are carpeted rooms, I would love to try rolling around on the floor. Wah! That'd be great! So great! I want to roll around too! Seems like their imaginations were just piling on. Well, sometime in the near future, it wouldn't be too bad to invite them all to my house. Dad's a sucker for the ladies, so he might even let them look around his studio. The cry of the Higurashi cr crescendoed as the sky towered over everything. It was hot, but the air was clear. It smelled like the beginning of summer. And the most important thing I took out of this is that our protagonist has a really big fucking house. Despite the fact that he's dirt poor. The Damn Sight Murder and Dismemberment, Newspaper Edition. Okay, so we're gonna get a newspaper clipping out of this, huh? From the June XXX. 1979 edition. The, Shishi, the Shishiboni City Oki, uh, Okinomiya Police Station June XX Late at night. Sussex blank 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 
were arrested on suspicion of murder and improper disposal of a corpse. The main offender, XXXXX, has been added to wanted lists nationwide. I'm assuming that the X's for the suspects, the number of X's refer to the number of characters in their names. One person has four characters. One three, another four. One five, another four. According to our sources, the six suspects were at the Hinamizawa Dam construction site workroom on the blanks of 9 p.m., where they are suspected to have assaulted and murdered the site overseer, uh, overseer blank, as a group, dismembering his body and hiding it. On the blanks at 8 o'clock in the morning, a reporter was, fi was filed. A report was filed by the Shishiboni City Hospital in which a male suspect alluded to having murdered Mr. Blank. When questioned at the police station, the individual confessed to the crime. Since a portion of the body was recovered at the location he gave, he was arrested that afternoon on suspicion of murder and mutilation of a corpse. The rest of the suspects were arrested the same day, but the main culprit is still at large. Police are currently on his trail. The motives purported to be a drunken verbal dispute during which he killed the victim in a fit of anger. However, as there are multiple inconsistencies with their testimonies, the investigation is ongoing. Five suspects, and we don't know any of their names. Allegedly, they all worked. They all worked together to kill somebody and dismember their corpse. Interesting. And the main culprit is still large. They suspect. Hmm. Going by the details of this newspaper, and if and if Rina's and, and Rina's reaction to uh, Keiichi talking about the incident are any indication, yeah, I guess this would be the kind of incident. That'd be a bit difficult for a lot of people in a small town such as this to talk about. I mean, I don't think murders in general are very common in Japan. Compared to uh, many other regions in the rest of the world, but... In a country like Japan, and in a small rural area like this to boot. Again, I guess I can kind of see why there'd be a lot of people that wouldn't want to talk about this incident. Considering now horrible it sounds but it's just making me more curious and want to know just what exactly happened and who are these suspects okay I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut this episode off here and we can continue on and we can continue on with the next part of chapter one in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoy this latest episode of Higarashi When They Cry, Chapter One. If you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I'll see you all next time. Take care.